So as I was saying, the uh, second classifications based on detection methodology can also be broken down in three categories. Um, first is anomaly detection based IDS, uh, second misuse detection based IDS, and third specification detection based IDS. So conventional anomaly detection um, looks at, it can be looked at, there are three different kind of ways to go about that, I know there's a lot of threes, but um, turns out there's, so there's three categories, statistical, data mining, and artificial intelligence based methods. They're going to, looking at figure three of the paper, they show a taxonomy of how they break these down. And so we're, I'll talk briefly about each of these sections. Um, so you don't need to spend too, too much time looking at this chart here, but you can refer back to this. Um, so the first set, the statistical detection models use three broad areas, three broad ways, univariate statistical detection, um, which are, in which case all the parameters related to detection are modeled as independent Gaussian uh, random variables. Multivariate, multivariate statistical detection, where two or more metrics are correlated and evaluated to obtain you know, conclusions about intrusions. Finally, time series statistical detection, uh, where they have event counters record inter-arrival times and event happenings to be further analyzed. And um, this can look across multiple types of events. The second type of anomaly, of conventional anomaly detection is data mining. These can be expert systems, um, which are you know, devised to manage complex problems uh, looking at a variety of knowledge represented mostly as if-then rules rather than legacy procedural code. Um, in this detection model, audit data is classified according to predefined rules to be solved by reasoning approaches. Second, de description language. In the detection mo this detection model, based on some data specifications, um, unified modeling language diagrams are generated with the, the to help with the detection methodology. Finally, or it's not finally, thirdly, finite state machines, um, which can switch from one state to another to transition based on some external stimulants, and the change of a state is referred to as a transition. Uh, so the FSM is declared by a list of its states, uh, its initial state, and then the terms for each transition. In this model, based on available data sets, states and transitions related to FSM are generated, and some of the states and state transitions are expected to help with catching intrusions. Finally, data clustering and outlier detection, uh, kind of clear, look, looking at different, you know, clustering the data, clustering data to see uh, based on pre predefined ideas, I guess, of, to look for predefined similarity or distances from each other. And that, you know, events outside a certain range are, are considered outliers. Finally, conventional anomaly detection using AI there's actually eight different sort of sub techniques here. So using Bayesian networks, which is a form of probability theory. Um, so Bayes theorem is described as the probability of an event based on prior knowledge of conditions, which would be related, related to that event. Um, hidden Markov models using stochastic Markov theory to employ, to create states that are interrelated with some transition probabilities. Uh, in this model, the topology of the network, as well as the capabilities of the overall ideas can be modeled and observed. Fuzzy logic, uh, where Boolean logic has truth values of variables which are represented by you know, by zero or one. But in contrast, fuzzy logic uses a sort of multi-valued logic and with truth values can be any real number between zero and one. And it is employed to handle the concept of partial truth or partial falsity, uh, where the truth value may range between completely true and completely false. And this um, can help with uncertainty and approximation to evaluate event conditions which are either intrusions or not. Genetic algorithms, um, so the genetic algorithms are a meta heuristic inspired by natural selection, um, the, uh, the Darwinian natural selection, that belongs to a larger class of evolutionary algorithms. They are commonly employed to obtain high quality solutions for search and optimization problems and use bio-inspired operators such as mutation, crossover, and selection. Um, Artificial neural networks, um, this is becoming more, more and more common. Using neural networks um, kind of influenced the mathematicians uh, to solve complicated problems. I mean, this is, this is AI as we talk about it all the time. Um, and here they use some specific data sets to construct and train the neural networks and use that to do, to do classification and detection. Principal component analysis, PCA. Um, this is a statistical procedure to convert a set of observations of correlated variables into a set of values 
um, of linear, linearly uncorrelated variables called principal components by deploying an orthogonal transformation, essentially looking for the highest variance um, of, of, the, of the value. And uh, these can, this is a dimensionality reduction technique that can be used to look at intrusions. Um, it comes up with things you wouldn't think about as uh, kind of human preconditions or human uh, preconceived ideas of what you might find. Um, PC8 is a good job of getting around those. Support vector machines in this detection model, supervised learning models called SVM, um, are associated with learning algorithms that analyze network traffic and are used for classification or regression analysis. Extreme learning machines in this detection model, feed forward neural networks are used for classification, regression, clustering, sparse approximation, compression, and feature learning the attack vectors towards the system or network with a single layer or multiple layers of hidden nodes. And the parameter of the hidden nodes need not be tuned. So there's some classification based on mi misuse detection based IDS, um, where the interval rule, um, inter inter arrival times of consecutive messages must be below some certain threshold, retransmission rule, so nodes should work cooperatively together to retransmit message on the route, Integrity rule, the integrity of the original message should be verifiable at the receiver. The delay rule, if a message delays a certain amount, then that needs to be retransmitted by the source. Repetition rule, so retransmissions are allowed up to a certain number. Radio transmission range, messages from outsiders should be detected. And jamming rule, there should be a maximum threshold to define normal packet collision rates. System diagnosis methods for IDS. Um, these uh, are a few different categories. There's file integrity checking, one of the strongest tools of IDS to look at unauthorized modifications of critical system files as well as data files. There's network scanning, uh, examining the, the programs examine critical network services, systems and services for configuration errors and vulnerabilities. Um, network sniffing, so these tools capture network traffic and, and look at what what's in the traffic. Um, Log, log analysis, so collecting and analyzing diagnostic status information from the network devices and servers. It's probably the most important concept in IDS and recovery. Um, it, without the help of logging, the only way to learn what the problem is to see it is to see it while it's happening or to observe its consequences afterward. And there are two analysis methods for logging, manual and automated. Data resources for detecting, uh, sen for detection sensors, so there's Access to registry, or creating log for, logs for accessing registry records in a Windows operating system. Integrity checks of the files, uh, log file records, um, system call traces. So there are, broadly speaking, four different types of anomaly decisions um, based on these probability distributions of normal and abnormal activity. So what you see on the left is abnormal activity under the red curve, and on the towards the right, um, normal activity. And the vertical axis, the x, the y-axis, is the probability of of seeing that the, that activity. So there's um, true positives, which are you know intrusion activities that were declared truly declared as abnormal. That's what you want to see. True negatives, where normal user activities um, are declared as normal, but um, and and IDS should not trigger the alert. Um, false positives, which are where there's actually Normal user activity is falsely declared as abnormal, so it's just a bad performance indicator for an IDS. Uh, since it's essentially typical behavior is declared as, or typical users are declared as intruders. And finally, false negatives, which are intrusion activities falsely declared as normal. It's also a dangerous situation since um, intruders can look like uh, normal users. So the another suggestion that the authors make uh, is to use as uh, a system called honeypots or honeypot systems, um, which are decoy systems that are designed to fool intruders into thinking they're attacking the real system. And this is an IDS in the sense that you can then uh, see what the intruders are doing, uh, even though they're not attacking the actual system, but are attacking your, your decoy. Um, so there are two types. There's low interaction honeypots that simulate only a few of the services frequently visited by attackers or frequently requested by attackers. Um, so they don't demand as many resources and their virtual systems can be efficiently employed for this purpose. And then there are high interaction honeypots, which are imitating the functionalities of regular systems and host a number of services. Attackers spend and waste their valuable time exploring these services. And um, as mentioned above, multiple honeypots can be hosted on a single physical machine. But you can, yeah, and you can do the, the low interaction ones on um, virtual systems. So 
they're quite expensive is, is their main downside, but they're higher, they're better, more, they're more secure. And here's a, a schematic figure five of how you might implement honeypots um, within a system behind some gateways, um, kind of more external to the network and more internal to the network in one case. So the broad conclusions of the authors are that CPS or cyber physical systems of smart cities are mostly considered critical infrastructure and therefore need to be protected by all means. Uh, and that in their opinion, uh, intrusion detection systems are essential to securing cyber, cyber physical systems of smart cities. Hybrid IDS, which is host-based and network-based, in their opinion, is the best option for intrusion detection. They think that you know, rapid response is essential or important for critical infrastructure. And in the future, uh, AI-based uh, intrusion detection system algorithms might be a good defense against insider attacks. Thank you for your time. I look forward to hearing your comments, questions.